All right, today, guys, we are going to be installing an extra 400 watts of solar deployable. So if you want to see how that's done, stick around, check it out. Hey guys, welcome to another video. I'm Chris, this is the Salty Trip Channel. And today we are going to be installing some more so solar panels. I know the, the roof is packed. We can't fit another single panel up there, really. Last, in another previous video, we showed you how we deployed an extra 400 watts on the ground. And we had a workaround because we had to charge it through the all power power station that went to a battery charger, then back into the system. Because we didn't have one of these an extra solar charge controller. And we are gonna set this up so that we can, we just have a pass through that we plug it in and it's ready to go. So we can bypass that other mess and get some extra power for boondocking or in our case, lower our power bill. I'll show you what we're gonna do. All right guys, so we have two sets of these. These are 200 watts each of all power deployable solar panels and they just fold out from that. And all this is, is a pass through and we're just gonna drill a hole and pass through. And then we just gotta put a, a 30 amp breaker, an MP, MPPT charge controller from Victron 130. This means that it allows 100 volts input and it will put a maximum output of 30 amps. Max input voltage, max output amperage. So that's what those numbers mean. And then we got a little breaker to go from charge controller to the distributor. Our a VE direct cable, so it'll talk to our Servo GX. And it should be a pretty simple install. We're still waiting on one part to come in. Hopefully Amazon brings it today. We're waiting on some wire, but we're gonna get started and put in what we can. And then when Amazon gets here, we'll finish it up. First thing I'm gonna do is, this is a little chassis ground for the charge controller. And it just has, a, you know, this four negative cable that goes and grounds it to the chassis. So we're gonna make a little extension for that real quick and put that on. There you go. So what exactly is a charge controller and what does it do? Well, I know a lot of people get confused because they see advertised for sale like 12 volt panels and 24 volt panels. And basically that doesn't mean that those panels put out 12 volts or those other 24 volt panels put out 24 volts. That's not how that works. They just advertise it as a high enough voltage to be able to charge a 12 volt battery or a 24 volt panel is high enough voltage so it can charge a 24 volt battery. What that means is if you have a 12 volt battery, usually you have to charge a couple of volts over what that 12 volt state is. Usually lithium 12 volt batteries run uh, on the high end 14 to 14.4 volts. And that's what it sits at. And then as you use it, it gets down close to 12 volts. And usually when it gets close to 12 volt, it's dead. So. But, you know, same thing with lead acid and AGM. Run at a higher than 12 volts, just by a volt or two. And then, so for you to be able to put 14 volts into a battery, you need to be charging higher than that voltage so it'll go in. And that's what this does. That's what these numbers are, though. You know, MPPT 100 by 30, 100 volts in, uh, 30 amps out. And it doesn't say what the voltage is out because this one does 20, 12 and 24 volts and you can change the settings in these like our 24 volt batteries charge at 28.8 volts but that's what they charge at and usually the absorption and where it sits at is about 27.5 volts so it sits well above 24 volts so you have to have something higher than the voltage that you're using to be able to push it into the batteries and that's what this does. And it's basically just like the panels that we are going to be deploying today, they run about 36 volts, they say max. So we're gonna run them in series, which means you double it. So it should be about 72 volts max. And that's under the 100 volt limit of this charge controller 
so we should be good to go. And it'll take that 72 volts, cram that down into 28 volts. So that 400 watt of panels that we're going to deploy, if it gets max 400 watts, it'll cram that 72 volts at about 5 amps and smash those volts down but raise the amps up. So it'll be about 28 volts going out and about 15 amps going out with it. Same amount of power. You remember Ohm's law, volts times amps equals watts. To get the same amount of power, if the volts go down, the amps go up and vice versa. With the higher voltage, the less amps you need for the same amount of power. I hope that kind of explains things. So we got a little room left in this corner and we're just going to take some self-tapping screws and just mount this to the wall. And here's our chassis ground. Just gonna go right up here. And we got this breaker that we are just going to mount right up here. Some more self-tapping screws. And we're just gonna hack these off and connect it directly to the controller. Well, real quick, I want to point out one of the reasons why you, you would choose a 24 volt system over a 12 volt system. Like with this charge controller, a 30 amp output at 12 volts is only 360 watts. So the max that you can connect to this in a 12 volt system is 360 watts a panel. But with a 24 volt, and you can put 720 watts through this thing. So I could actually get a third panel and have 600 watts going through this easily. But with a 12 volt system, I would only get 360 watts through this charge controller. I basically need three more charge controllers if I was running a 12 volt system to have the same amount of power of wattage coming from outside in here. All right, so we're gonna wire this so that the, we don't have any, have to leave any hatches open. We have this little pass through. We're gonna drill a couple holes here and just put mount this into here. So then we can just plug in any external plugs right into it and be good to go. There you go. All right, we're gonna do a little close up of how to install these MC4 connectors. First, you just, that's 10 gauge, so strip it and then slip that on there. And then you just give it a little pinch like that. That'll hold, help hold it on there. And then you put these things on here and make sure you see where the, those are facing up. You want those to slide in there. So stick those in there. Just like that. And crimp it down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this cap, slip it over, waterproof connector. And then you slip this in till you hear it click, or you feel the click. And then make sure that waterproof connection goes in there and then just screw it tight. These kits do come with a little wrench to tighten these down, but I find I can usually do them by hand. And there you go. Now we just have to put a couple of MC4 connectors on here, which is pretty simple. I'll leave a link to these uh, 
tools in the description area below. All right, so we got a little pass-through wired right through here, and then comes up to our breaker, the outer breaker, directly into the charge controller. And then we'll have a couple of lines come out and come down to the Lynx distributor. All right, now we're just gonna take our VE direct cable. And this is how it talks to the Servo GX. And just comes back up and plugs into here. They're marked, labeled. So while we're waiting on Amazon, we're gonna throw up these solar panels where I plan on putting them. You know, we're at a campsite, so I don't really have a lot of place. We don't have a, a big lot to deploy them. So I have an idea that involves these clamps and we're gonna see if they work. I'm probably gonna mount these things vertically. You really want these things angled, you know, perpendicular with the sun, but I really don't, don't have the space. So we are gonna hang these off the kitchen slide and see how that works. So we're almost getting sun. It's almost noon and we've almost got full sun on them. Got a little bit of shade on that corner, but that's it for right now. We'll see how that does. And also I don't want this thing flapping around. So I took these little clips and clipped them onto here and then took these little bungees and clipped them in the corners so that hopefully the wind won't catch it and pull it down. Those are some heavy duty clips. So that should hold it. Hopefully, we'll see how it holds up. I'll keep you updated. How many of you guys have ever mounted these things vertically somewhere and got power from it? I don't know, we're gonna find out how much power we can get mounting it vertically. Otherwise, we lay it on the ground, but if somebody moves in next to me, I don't know if that's gonna shade it. So we're gonna give this a try. All right, well, we have full sun, so we can send power to it. So we got it plugged in and I flipped the breaker on. First thing it's gonna ask you when you connect it to your Victron Connect app is, for updates so we're updating it as soon as this gets done i'll show you how we do our settings all right this is what we do we you just go to the charge controller the you know 100 by 30 click on that this is after we got the software updates i recommend it's gonna you know when you first start it up to is change your bluetooth pin on it because then anybody can connect to it if they you know are familiar with victron equipment but anyway, all right, we're putting in 77 volts. Of course, no amperage because we're not connected to a battery, so it has nowhere to put it. And of course, that will drop as immediately when we start actually pulling power from it. Usually, it reads the highest, highest when it's not um, pulling any amperage. Anyway, we just go up here to settings, and we go to battery, and we'll switch this to 24 volt. And usually, it just automatically does it when I have it connected to a battery, but because uh, it's not connected to the battery yet. It didn't sense it, so I had to tell it to. And then we we'll just go to presets, go to select preset, and then scroll down, and you just click smart lithium. And there you go. And then it's absorption uh, rate needs to be 28.8. And the float should be 27.6. Done. Okay. And because it's lithium, there's no equalization. Actually, I did find some uh, extra wire laying around. So we are going to go ahead and get this project done. I didn't think I had enough, but apparently I did have some extra. Hopefully this one's long enough. If it's long enough, we can get this done. All right, so we got our ends on, and I'm just gonna put this through here. This is our little 30 amp breaker. Tighten this down.
tighten this down. And honestly, I would rather have a fuse, but I'm running out of space with my Lynx distributor and I have nowhere to put it. I'd have to rearrange everything. I don't know how I'm gonna would squeeze another distributor in here unless I get rid of this and put it somewhere else. So we are going to attach to the end over here. I don't recommend stacking lugs, but you know, I feel okay as long as it's not a ton of amperage. All right, guys, so the moment of truth. Let's connect to the app. Got the breakers on and three volts, 2.7 amps, 177 watts. So I'm kind of wondering as the day goes on how they're gonna be, but I don't know where else to mount them. I don't have room on the roof. I really don't have room on the ground, but still it's extra power that we didn't have before we put this in. We'll see how it goes. Leave your thoughts and comments down in the comment section below. If you have any questions about the install and stuff like that. Hey, monkeys. Hey, monkeys. Hey, little rascals. They've been really good inside while daddy's out here setting up that solar. So why am I, why did I do this? Why did I add 400 watts of solar hanging off the side of the RV? Well, at this spot that we're at right now, we only have a 30 amp hookup and it's a monthly uh, charge rate. So we pay electricity. So if I can mitigate as much electricity as possible with solar, then the better off we are. And I, I already have the panels, so might as well put them to use. And when we go boondocking somewhere else or when we're traveling, it's available for us to just set up and throw out anywhere. If the sun's on this side, that side, we can set up over there. If the sun's on this side, we can set it up over here wherever it needs to go. So it's very versatile and the charge controller uh, isn't much. It's like like a, maybe 100, 120 bucks and the little breakers. I'll, I'll leave links to all that stuff down in the description area below. But, you know, hopefully this will help save us some money on electricity and let us kind of know what to expect mounting them in that fashion so that we may do it in the future. May hang it off the front here if we're facing the other direction one day. Who knows? We'll see. And also with our Victron system, we can limit how much we draw from shore. Well, it's limited too. We can only go down to max out the limit at 18.5. So we're always gonna draw 18.5 amps before the Victron batteries and solar takes over. So at least we'll never draw more than that. And the power from the solar will hopefully mitigate all the rest. But maybe in the winter time when it's a lot cooler and the air conditioners are running, I may just disconnect the shore power altogether and not pay any electric bill. So if you want to see how that works out, stay tuned. But it's we're not getting 400 watts. Uh, we're getting less than 200 right now. So we'll see how it goes. I'll probably do update videos in the future. So make sure you're subscribed and you got your notification bell on. Uh, we try to you know share all our solar and RV full-time living exp experiences with you guys. So hopefully you got something out of this. Thanks for coming along. If you want to see future videos, remember subscribe and we'll see you guys next week.